Okay, so detailing. Detailing goes hand in hand with both plans and sections. Um, can be also elevations, depending on what you're trying to do. Um, most of the time you're gonna do one from the other. Um, I can easily, if we look at our enlarged plan that I made, um, you may have done it, you may not have done it with me. Um, I could easily come in and say, here's my enlarged plan. I'm gonna turn my detailing or my view detail to fine and I'm gonna increase the scale here, right? And make it really, really, really big, really big. All right, that's, that's one method of, of approaching a detail view. Um, that's not necessarily correct though because I don't have, when I go to call this out, I have no way of, of referring this detail back to the actual drawing set. So what I need to do is, is actually use Revit's way of, of doing a call out. Okay, um, I'll go into that floor plan view. Well, let's go to a section. Let's do a section um, straight on out, start from, start from fresh. Actually, we have two core sections. So let's go to core section A. Um, and then in core section A, we'll leave it as the full core section. And then within that core section, you'll see my scale is at an eighth inch equals a foot. And then I have my detail level as coarse, right? So that's fine for, for something to scale when it goes on a sheet. It's about the amount of information we're going to see. But I want to I wanna begin detailing out how how the wall is meeting the top and how the wall is meeting in the bottom between the floors, uh, between the floor sandwich. Um, you know, maybe this is cutting through a door, maybe it's not cutting through a door. I want to see those jam details, the sill details, all the things that, that really make up a, a set of good construction documents, not just, you know, design documents where I, here's the idea of the building, but the actual how we put together the building. Um, I'm going to go to the view menu, view ribbon. And then I have next to this, we've been kind of teetering all the way around it and it's saying call out. So when I pull that down, I have two ways of making the call out. I can sketch out a call out, so I can do a polygon call out if I want, or I can just do a rectangle. In our case, we just want the rectangle and I'm gonna call out that section there, right? So it goes underneath the section call out area if I want to make a new type, so we've already done new types, um, we'll do another type of that. And I'm gonna organize all of my callouts <coughs> to be not building sections, but under callout. So I'll open up my callout section. When I open that up, you'll see it defaults me to a quarter inch equals a foot. Um, in this case, I may want it to be something larger, so I would change the scale. One and a half inches equals a foot. You'll see my level tags appear to get smaller. However, it's my, my drawing that's changing. Um, and then I'm going to go to the properties of that view. And I'm going to look and see if there is a call out. So yes, there is a detail without reference. And then there's a detail probably with reference. So in this case, let's do this as detail without reference. And so what do you think a detail without reference would refer to? It would be something that, that doesn't have a referring thing. So partition details. Rarely do we have walls that refer back to the actual partition detail. Um, the ways to solve this would be, you know, taking all of your wall types, once you guys get those figured out, and doing a separate Revit file with everything there and doing a linked view with it, right? So that way everything refers back. Otherwise, you're, you're just making a, a blank sheet, right? Every process is going to have the same set of partition details, your standard partition details, how you put together a wall. Those are, those are non-referring views. In this case, this is a referring view. It's, it's a custom case. How is the floor meeting, meeting the, the court? Um, we probably wouldn't want a detail without reference. We would then take this, edit its type, and I'm going to duplicate that and call it with reference or just detail with. Right, and then it, it'll, you can change your symbols, um, what the call out head looks like, all, all of the such, right? It's gonna control how that tag looks in section, even though I'm changing it in this view property. Okay. And then when I look in the project browser, I should see now my detail views details with references. So this one's call out of core section A. I know that this is going back to core section A. So when you walk onto a project, there's gonna be times where 
you have a series of these and they don't have referring views or maybe they do but that referring view is going through 20 other referring views um, remember that I can always come in and I can say right click on that view and say I want to find referring views and it's going to refer back so since this is referring from a call out or from a section it's coming back to core section A the, the difference and why this is more important doing it this way, if I, if I do what I was trying to do, the same operation and try and do it with the floor plan, when I open this up, I'm going to go, well, what's the referring view, right? I'm going to have all these other views that come up that show that enlarged plan because elevations are calling out that plan, so on and so forth. If I did the same, right, so here we tried kind of increasing the scale to begin doing our call out. If I had just gone to my floor plan and on level four did my call out from this, now I have a call out. There we go here. So it should be under drawing set enlarged plans call out a level four. Okay. Now when I go to a referring view for that, it's only going to give me this single referring view. So it, it cleans up, right? There's a, there's a hierarchy. There's always a hierarchy of process within this. All right, so now about detailing. So let's go back to that core section A. So whenever I'm doing detailing, I'm not going to be on the course view anymore. I'm going to be changing this to the fine view. So fine view is going to give me all intersection points on the geometry. It's going to remove, um, it's going to really remove any type of, um, it's going to remove any um, core, um, course fill scales. It's going to actually show me the hatching. All right, so when I zoom in here, I should begin seeing hatching on my elements. In our case, this is all concrete. Um, things that I would want to detail out. So is this a you know metal pan? So am I doing a steel decking for my concrete? Is it a composite floor? Um, is it held up by a beam? How does that beam meet the core? Is the, is the beam holding in the core or out of the core coming through it? Is it a pocket detail? All those things we begin um, figuring out within the detail section. And we're taking existing geometry. So um, when we talk about, you hear people talk about level of detail with Revit models. So level of detail 100 is like, like a massing form. Like yesterday, we kind of went into the massing environment, did, did some building massings. That's your level of detail 100. It's basic building geometry, kind of little space plans, diagrams, things like that, all done in Revit. Level of detail 200 is all your full building sections, your floor plans. We're kind of at a level of detail 200 today. So all the content, if we had the whole building done, to this level, quarter inch scale plans, quarter inch scale elevations. That's level of detail 200. Level of detail 250 slash 300 is getting into actually detailing out how the building goes together, right? So what we do is we take existing geometry and we basically mask things over it. We can use existing geometry. If you're really good, like if you look at some, pro I've seen some projects where they model They've, they've done this so many times that they've modeled out all of their wall assemblies, right? They have all of their anchor bolts modeled into it, um, and they're calling those into referring linked files. So they don't have to do as much detailing as you would in a case like this. But those aren't custom buildings. Those are you know your grocery stores, your, your banks, suburban banks. So it's just, I'm plopping it on a farm field, right? So it can be anything. In this case, this is a really custom building with, with custom um, intersections and everything else so I, I need to kind of use existing geometry and then begin drafting over that so any drafting happens from the annotation ribbon and anything in the annotation ribbon from what we we learned in the last lesson was that it's only in this view so even though I draft on top of this view it doesn't mean that I'm going to be drafting over the entire model in every single view it's only going to be in this specific view right and most of my my detailing happens within right here, right? I can make lines. Um, hatches are handled through regions. So I'm no longer, you know, picking a hatch boundary. I'm drawing a region where I want to put in my own hatch, right? 
And then I'm also loading components. So components like a family, if I let the, the graphic show here, let that come up. So a component would be like a repeating detail or something of the such. There are repeating details. I'm gonna have a CMU block or I'm gonna have a stock pine stud or I'm gonna have, um, you know, in this case, the anchor bolt is showing it in the drawing. Um, insulation is gonna be a component. Anything that I can draw ahead of time. So those components are like blocks in AutoCAD, 2D blocks. Um, there's a tool for insulation. Um, we can make our own insulation. I can also do detailed groups. So I know that, um, let's think of like a, a hanging brace, like a hanging bracket. I go to Simpson Strong Tie, and then I know that Simpson Strong Tie is gonna need me to have XYZ nail um, for that specific hanger in that specific condition. I'm gonna make the nail as its own component, then I'm gonna make another item as its own component, um, and then I'm gonna group those together, and I'm gonna save that out as a detailed group. So that way, I have a bunch of little blocks all together that then make another big block. So think of a detailed group as like a nested block, right? Just no layer system. So here you can see the, the graphic. In this case, it's attaching the, 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 L, the L channel to the, to the core wall, right? Poxy, poxy bolts. Okay, and then my revision cloud. So revision cloud's like a, a one-off. Um, there's a separate schedule. We'll talk about this when we get into revision schedules. Um, and how that comes across. And again, all the dimensions and doing kind of advanced concepts like spot elevation, spot coordinates, spot elevation, right? What is my elevation at this point? Pretty simple. Because it's now tracking and I've set my project base points, it's automatically gonna give me what the elevation is at any single point that I pick, right? As long as I set that up ahead of time, um, you know, spot coordinates, what is my coordinate at this point, right? Which is, so you know, you think of like punch listing in, in CA, right? I'm coming in and I'm building my, my file out or I'm building my building out. You know, Revit has the future potential of making it so when I do punch lists, I can in real time track myself inside that building, where it's being built, is it matching up? Um, when I, I know you guys did Aqua with a GPS port, similar, similar idea here, right? I can track all that. Those same coordinates are the same ones that get transferred over to machine language when we do digital fabrication. Um, when I go to Unity, I can connect this. We're working on at IIT, connecting up the BIM model with your phone so we can go into a building space, put on little Google Glasses, right? Take our Revit model, sync the GPS with the GPS internally with the model, and then now I'm moving and spinning, looking virtually what the building is going to be while I'm just looking at slabs, right? So all of that, that data, right? So that data modeling is, is, is there at any time. As long as we set it up. So we've set up hierarchy of systems here. Right, okay, so simple is, that's kind of like the broad scope brush uh, of, of potentials and, and existing data. Again, talking about tags, we'll do tags a little later um, once we get data into it. So let's just draw, right? We all like to draw. That's why we went into architecture initially. When we were kids, we did little drawings, little houses with gables and blue skies. Um, so I have my core wall here. If I need to query an element, I'm always just querying elements to find out what they are. In this case, I, I'm not going to be going back and forth, right? Because that's that's not an effective way to be drafting. Um, I'm going to look and say, oh, that's my rectangular wall straight opening. And because I don't have a line weight, that's telling me I'm probably looking at something in elevation two ways to query what I'm looking at, right? I can just hover over it on an edge. It's gonna tell me at the bottom left what it is. And also if I hover over long enough, it's gonna bring up um, that view of what it is um, within a window for me, a dialog box. And then there's also the ability to then come in to the manage tab. And under the manage, I have an inquiry file. So under the inquiry, I can select by ID. So every object has a unique identifier. I don't suggest using this, it gets crazy. I can also then just, um, well, yeah. So if I needed to find things by ID and I knew what they were and I was setting IDs, I could show them. Um, traditionally, it's a little difficult. So just hover over it, figure out what it is. I know that this in particular is my, is my slab condition. So is our core wall gonna come through our slab or how are we doing it? Uh, is this slab on grade? Uh, no, this one's slab in the air. So we'll be attaching the slab around the core. Yeah. So the slab goes around the core in this case. 
Why is it only five inches? No, oh, that's what I define. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I define. So again, okay, why is my slab only five Sorry. inches? No. Well, that's that's perfect. So the, this is the time where those questions begin to happen, right? Well, we drew this at five inches. Well, I know my slab's going to be at you know ten, twelve, eight inches, something like that. Um, but maybe whoever was modeling it knew that you're not going to want to show that at, at quarter inch plans, right? You just want to see this show the line, show the thickness. Right, it's it's weighting other data, right? So first things first, I know that my core is going to come up through that that floor. So, but I have it drawn and modeled as if the floor is over the wall. Well, that's okay. What I can do is I don't need to show that because at coarse um, scale everything goes black, so I don't see that relationship. Mm -hmm. First things first, go to the manage or go to the annotate tab and I'm going to do a region. So within that region, I can either do a filled region or I can do a masking region. So I want to mask over that particular area. So by clicking on the masking region, I enter into the sketch mode. Now some things to, to be aware of, I can add lines to my, my boundary of that. So masking, um, let's just leave it on invisible lines for now. Let's pick on the rectangle tool and let's just draw over that center area. And I can lock it to geometry. So the same way we did family editing, I can lock elements to those. I can go ahead and lock that in. So if, if my wall moves, my region's gonna move with it, right? If my wall grows in size, my region's gonna grow with it. Same thing with the floor. If my floor grows in thickness, it's gonna grow that, that masking region. So when I mask it out, all of a sudden it's like, whoops, what the heck, it masked out everything. So it's not, there's no hierarchy of draw over. When I, when I do a masking region, it's gonna mask everything geometrically in that view, okay? And you'll see when I mask it, I selected hidden lines. So I don't get an edging when I do my mask. There are times where you might just wanna mask out the back elevation. So let's say we had a chair that was coming up in this view, right? Instead of moving the chair or hiding the chair, I would just mask out that area, right? And then I would leave it with invisible lines. If I want the line to show up where I'm masking, I go in, I select my masking region, I'm gonna edit that boundary, and within that boundary, I'm gonna select the region itself, and then I can change its line style. Fire separation, whatever, you know, check. All right, so now that shows up. So it might be something that you do want to do. It's not, it's not a good example, but that's what it does. So we'll just undo that case. Okay, so now I have, I need to carry my wall up through it. Now, when I drew out your floor plan here, I see that I have one, my rectangular straight opening at the bottom, and then I also have another wall that's coming through it. Right, so I'm looking at a cut through that wall and then I'm looking at a straight opening. Now that wall, I continued all the way up through that core. So now I see a line through there. So I'm gonna to wanna to mask over that as well, right? So instead of doing my masking region all the way up through there, I don't have to do a mask and then a hatch. I can use the hatch and the hatch will suffice as a masking region. So I can delete that off. You gotta check. Oh, and if you don't see the line weight, TL for thin lines. Wow, wow, that's big. Yeah, TL is your best friend. TL, WT, MA, WA, all those are good. AL for line. Right, so instead of doing the masking region here and then drafting another hatch over it, I'm just gonna use the, the hatch as my full masking region. So I'll come in and instead of doing the mask, I'll do a filled region. And then filled region, if I go to properties, has a set of types as well. So just like we define line styles, just as, fine as just as the same way we define text styles, I can define hatch styles. So instead of, you know, in CAD I would type hatch, and then I would define my hatch style, same way here, I enter my masking region command, I select what hatch I want, or I create a new hatch. In our case, we're just gonna do concrete, precast is fine. I'm gonna select the rectangle tool, because this is rectangular. 
click and drag, and then I'm gonna lock it to those openings and my top. So now if my, if my floor changes, my masking region is gonna change with it, or my fill region is gonna change with it. If the wall grows, that's gonna grow with it as well. Um, and then I'm masking out um, the detail that happens um, where that wall um, commences. So now I look and I say, well, whoops, I still, Craig, I still see that line. Well, why do you think we see that line? Well, there must be something within the hatch that's not masking that out. So how do I get it so it masks those things out? Um, I'm gonna come into my filled region, and right now it says SGA precast concrete. If I edit the type of that hatch, I look and it says background. What is my background? My background is transparent. Well, I want my background to not be transparent. I want it to be opaque. If I click apply, now, when I click OK, it'll mask out that. So I'm not picking, even though I'm in a shaded view here, I'm blanking it out to be black and white. Okay? And right now it's a cut pattern, so I would want to change. So this precast concrete, I'm going to edit its type. I'm going to duplicate off that region, and I'm going to call it SGA concrete. How do you get the locks to show conventions in general? Oh, if um, let me finish this and we'll come. I'll show you how to do the locks um, when you lose them. So I'll do SGA concrete, and then what I do with hatches right now. So one is going to be a project. So remember yesterday in object styles and and our visibility, we had a cut, and then we had projection. So I always put cut after it as an identifier same way Revit does. That way I know that this is concrete being cut, this is concrete in projection. And then I change my fill pattern, right? We can do custom fill patterns. Um, if you have a, a question about custom fill patterns, just let me know. Now, what's nice is it appears as if um, somebody has come in and given you um, a clue, use this concrete for your detail. So we'll go ahead and click OK, and we'll use that one, click OK, so there we go. So there's concrete, so there's my concrete wall. Ooh. If I need to change the line weight, right, so you'll need to talk to John, or Aaron, most likely John, about the line weights. So line weights are already predefined for you, so selecting the correct line weight is huge. Um, and really, it's hard when you're detailing. This isn't a, a course on detailing. I can spend 16 weeks on drawing details. Um, we all know that when we draft out a detail, it's all about reference of surrounding objects. It's not that every piece of concrete that gets cut always gets this, this line weight. So having variability within our line weights is, is, also, is also key in how we manage those. Um, so before we get into that, to answer your question, Will, about losing the lock, I see my grip editor, right? Because I've locked it, when I go to move it, it's gonna say constraints are, are not satisfied. I remove them, so there's my piece. And if I drag that back and I find a line, check. So you have to drag it before you can see a lock? Um, yeah, you'll have to, or you can use the align tool, right? So in this case, I'll do AL for align. So hold on, just watch here for a second. Oh, there, there you go. The yep. I can also use the align. So if I'm not dragging, I'm going to tab through. So I'm grabbing the floor, then I'm aligning that element, and I can lock it that way too. <laughs> I typically use my align tool. Aaron uses the, the grips. Um, okay. So I'll select this item, uh, my hatching boundary. I'm going to edit that boundary. And then to change the line weight of that, I'm going to select it. And right now it's under invisible line, so it's waiting for me to come in and draft over it. Well, I know that I don't need to draft over that. I already have the masking region. Why am I gonna why am I gonna draft over it? So CAD, I would draw in my boundary and then I hatch my boundary. And if I associate them together when I move my boundary as a polyline, it's gonna move my hatch with it. In this case, it's kind of working like that, except I don't have to draw anything. I draw it once and then it's there. So I can take my line style. And I'm going to look at any other line styles I have, and it looks like I do have some line styles defined. I have one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Five line weights, and that's, that's typical of, of, of most firms. Five line weights get you about where you need to go. 
when you print on most printers, and the reason for that, if you don't know, is when you print on most printers, if you actually sat there and went through and did the line weights, it's about every, every couple or so um, for your defaults from CAD that become um, visible, right? So you see, actually begin to see a, a full discrepancy. You may gradually see a discrepancy, but the eye doesn't necessarily pick up on it. So that's why generally between the colors available in AutoCAD 1 through 8 or 9, you're going to get about 5, so every other one. Where do you get to see the line style? I don't know. Okay, I'm going to come in and, yeah, did you get it? So if you don't have it, you just select your mask and region, edit my boundary, tab through. So I select it, right? So I'm, I got the full boundary, not just the one side, because now you can see I can select one line here and I can change this one particular line on the one side to be wide. And then I can do the one on the left to make it thin. Check. If I do TL for thin lines, Right, I'll see both sides. So it doesn't have to be the whole hatch boundary either. It can be one side versus the other side. But in my case, I want it to be all sides because it is one straight piece. Edit that boundary, tap through, select it. And then within that, I'm gonna make it so it's, ah, so you'll see now, once I've selected that boundary, all of a sudden I have a ton of other options here. So if I look up here, so each one of these, remember yesterday too, um, is kind of corresponding with what the number is. Typically, you know, it, it's really about the office, so you'll have to review with John um, what your line weight properties are, and I'm sure he can print you out a sheet um, so you can read and look at them. Um, for us right now, I'm gonna go on the, on the pretense that we're using wide lines, thin lines, thick lines, right? Um, and then you guys will manage how those go together. So in this case, I'm going to make them wide lines. Check. There we go. There's my, there's my hatch, my rectangle, and my, and my line weight. Cool. The next thing is, is loading in components, right? So I've drawn things in. I wanna load in a component, right? Because I know that this particular slab, right? Uh, might have an L bracket there. That L bracket's gonna go into the concrete um, core. Within that core, I'm gonna, I'm gonna house maybe a steel pan decking. From that, then I'm gonna pour my concrete on top of it. Um, what I can do here is then come in and I'm gonna load what we call a component. Now I can either draw a new component or I can try and load in an existing component. So order of operation, always check and see if the component's already there. If the component's not already there, then you're gonna go and make your own component. So I'll go ahead and go to the detail component. And right now it's giving me AISC, two <coughs> section shape, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. You can read it on your own time. Um, these are just like families we've created yesterday, right? These are just detail, 2D detail families, right? Just like an AutoCAD block. I'm just gonna load them in on the fly and I'm gonna place them where I want. And the, better, the benefit of this is it's, it's parametric, right? So in CAD, you had to go to like Steel Plus or something like that, and then you can load in all your steel shapes. Um, similar to the way that works in, in AutoCAD, that little program is a little parametric program that's running AutoList routines. Thankfully for us, Revit is a parametric engine. We don't have to worry about that. So I can load in all kinds of different details. So in our case, these are all the different details that are preloaded into this, um, into this uh, particular Revit template that we built off of. In the event that you don't see it there, I can load it in. Um, if I want to see what's there prior to loading the detail element, I go to the project browser and then under families, I can look at detail items. So these are detail items that we're loading in. And I can see all the other detail items that I have loaded. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for an L channel, right? So I don't see that. So 
So where can I get that? So I need to load that in. It's going to be a steel shape. So I want to load in the steel shape. So what I can do is I go to insert and I'm going to load family. So instead of opening and creating a family, we're going to load an existing family that's within Revit or within your guys' own personal libraries um, for SGA. So we go to load family. Right at the menu top, brings up the insert ribbon. It's okay. Then we go to load family. And then we see a detail item. So I can open up detail items, and you'll see this is now beginning to allude to um, keynoting, divisions, spec sheets, all those things. So this is when those come into play. Everything's divided by division. Uh, I come in, and this is going to be under metals. So I'm going to come into metals. And then what type of metal? Is it gonna be metal fabrication, cold form, metal deck, metal joist, structural metal framing, metal fastening? So we'll look, I forget where this would be. It'd probably be under metal framing. Yeah, metal framing. And then I wanna bring up my ML angle section. So what do you think that M means? My, yours doesn't show the M. So I'm under metric, right? So when I did my install, I did it as metric. Um, so you can do a metric install or you can do a non-metric install. I just keep mine always at metric. Um, that's more for my own personal reasons. Um, in your case, if you're not under uh, metric, you don't have to be for this. Um, you can come into your libraries and under my libraries I have imperial and I have metric. Um, it seems like Revit out of the box gives you more families to work with with the metric. So if you're not seeing something on the imperial side, always go to the metric side and see if you see it there. I'm under detail items, metals. Do you guys have the, I don't know how to metric Oh, we're not under metric. I went to your <coughs> site. So you're following, I'm following what you got now. I go to structural steel framing. And then under structural steel framing, I'm going to go all the way down. And I should see, so ah, here we go. So I'm looking for my angle. Do I see any angle? I see top, I see side, I see section. Channel shape side, I see a C. There's my angle section. So there we go. So AISC should be the first one in the list says AISC angle shape section, right? So I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna open that. And then when I open this up, this is a type catalog. So similar to, I open up my steel manual. Everybody's opened up the steel manual, I, I'm, I'm assuming. Um, Basically, everything you see inside that is now embedded into Revit. So Revit has its own steel manual embedded into it and the logic behind it. So all I need to do is load in a series of, of detail items that I want. I warn you not to load all of them in. Um, they will, will slow your file down. So the more I have loaded in, the more problems I'm going to have. Where are you in Imperial? I, yeah, so to backtrack, I went to load family. I came into detail items. And then under detail items, I'm under metals. Division, division five metals. And I'm coming to structural metal framing. Within structural metal framing, I have structural steel. And then the first one, okay, so mine went back to metric again. Right, so again, Division 5 metals, structural steel framing. And I have my first one, angle shapes. And click on open. When I open that, I have another series. So I'm, I'm going down the rabbit hole. How many do I want? So in our case, I think just loading a few of these is fine. Again, don't load them all in. If you load them all in, you're going to really slow your file down. I, I, I already loaded in. You know, I went one day and said, well, wait a minute, why don't I have all this stuff loaded in? So I sat there one day, you know, my first newbie move using Revit was to load everything in, you know? I want it all in my file, you know? That's, and not, not a good thing. Couldn't open the file, eventually crashed it. So only load in what you need at the time. If it's not, unload it, you know, delete it out, and then load in the other one that you need. You will need to load a few in to check it, you know, to, to kind of get it close to where you want. All right, so they're loaded in, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're placed in the file because we loaded multitude, a multitude of those in at the same time. I have to explicitly tell Revit that I want it in the file. 
So I'm going to go back to my annotate ribbon. I'm going to go back to my component tool. So now when I go to place my component, I have my AISC angle shape section preloaded. And then within that, I see the different types that I had selected within that preloading set. Okay. So we'll do an 8 by 8. 8 by 8, 1 8 inch is fine. Take that and place it. So now I have it in there. However, it's not flipped the right direction. So when we build families, we can also build in flip controls. So I'm going to go ahead and flip that. And then I can move it. So remember MV for move. I can do a line operation. So all our standard um, operations are still applicable. MV for move. That's there. And then whoever had drafted this or created this, this section had made, um, let's look at what a detail family is, right? So I have this item. I'm going to edit that family. And when I edit that family, you'll see it looks nothing like the one I see in the picture. And that's because, um, comparative to yesterday, we have a series of, we have reference level. I should have a series of operations happening that make this thing parametric. And then I have different types of that item. Okay. One other thing is that similar to what we're doing now, within a detail family, right? There is a template for a detail family. We will do that. I'm making this as a masking region. It's the same as we did with the concrete. The only difference between this is now I have these flip controls. So flip controls, um, we'll do this as well. I can create a control. I can do a double horizontal. I can do a single horizontal with it. Right, I'm only allowed to go one way or the other way, um, so on and so forth. So that's what those do for me. They're very powerful. It used to be that you had to copy them out of the door family to get them into any other family. You don't have to do that anymore. We can go ahead and load that into the project. Let me just overwrite existing version. Okay, next is doing our concrete slab. So now I have my, you know, I'd probably put the bolts and all that stuff in there. Um, yeah. So then I'm going to do the concrete slab. I know I'm going to have a, a pan decking. So the pan decking, right, so this is a component, right? I can also have repeating detail components. When I go to my, my annotate ribbon again, under component, if I click on the arrow to the right there, I can do a repeating detail. So a repeating detail, if we let the video come up, is anything similar to a concrete block of the such. You know, in our case, a steel pan. Um, our pan decking is going to do that as well. It's going to be repeating detail. Um, so I always, especially with the concrete pan, I'm going to do that first, and then I'm going to lay the concrete out for um, after, right? Because I'm going to see what what's already been created. So somebody here was smart, and they created a repeating detail for the steel decking, and that has a masking region already in there for it, which is great to have. So I'm going to go in and do a repeating detail. And now these are different. So here I have a repeating detail for a drainage mat. Um, and then I also have my metal deck three inch. So you have to explicitly create these details, right? So this is similar to your, um, yesterday we did the, the, the space frame tool. So the way the space frame tool worked, I drew a line and I drew a series of these objects. Same thing for my metal deck. When I draw in my metal deck, as I draw out, it's gonna fill in pieces for me. I want to align that up in the space, so I'm going to do um, MV or AL for align, and I'm going to do the top of my channel. It's okay. Did it Did it I'm going to align the top of my channel to the bottom of my decking. Or I can just move it up in place and be for move. That lined up. I may have it going the other way, so that's one thing we don't have here. Is the decking going the other direction? Something somebody may want to add. 
Okay, in the event, let's say that my decking, I don't want my decking to start that way, right? I want my decking to start with the with a half there. I'm gonna move my decking into place. MV for move. Grab it here, MV. And then I'm gonna have to do a masking region over that area. When I do my masking region, right, all of a sudden I'm gonna have a problem with, delete that off. What's gonna happen is it's gonna mask out my, why <laughs> I'm there. Is drafting in Reddit tedious? Yes. Because I can imagine it feels that way. It is very tedious. It's, it's a different way of thinking, right? In CAD, you're gonna, half the time you're not even gonna use blocks when you're detailing, right? Yeah. I mean, I, there's still times when I'm drafting in CAD where I don't use blocks. Yeah. And, I, and I, I'm bad about that. Um, Revit kind of forces you into pre-making all these things. This is why people kind of complain a little bit. It's like, well, wait a minute, I have to do all these things again. Um, I still use CAD for a lot of things, especially details like this, just because I'm faster. Um, but the problem with that is it's not connected to Revit, right? In this case, there's an added benefit in that all of my views are, are succinct. Um, these items can be drawn in CAD, so I wouldn't sit there and try and draw my decking in CAD. I probably already have a block that has the decking. I would open up a detail view, import my CAD lines, make that my detail, and then that's my detail, right? And you're noticing that, yeah, the tediousness comes from, well, now I need to start playing with draw order, right? Because I need to mask out one region. One's not masking out the other one, so this needs to come back to the half. I guess I'm just noticing a slight lag compared to CAD. Yep. Because maybe that's just how it is. It's not, it. yeah, exactly. And, and really pre-setting your drawing operations, so something is rectangle, right? I'm always still trying to do rectangle. And it doesn't do it. I'm going back into the rotate command or the copy command. Um, again, but draw order is something that to pay attention to here. Um, selecting the, the decking, sending it to back, send back words, right? It's going to send it behind that item, send back farther, right? It's going to send it behind my masking region. Do you control the start of your repeating detail by setting the, the origin of it? Yep. Yep, you gotta mask it, yeah. If you're gonna, unless I go in and, and if I was smart and I made this detail, right, I would have, because you can see whoever drafted it began to draft it correctly in the fact that they have a line there and they have a line there. So I need to be smart about how I build these families. This is not a smart family or a smart enough family because I need to come in and do this masking region. If I was smart enough, we know that I could do a flip control with it, right? If I edit this family, edit type, uh, did it, there's my detail, so I would need to come in, select that detail and edit it, right? And then in that detail, I would put a flip control to flip it one direction, flip it the other direction. Um, I would also have a visibility. Am I, is this a visibility start or is this a visibility end? Remember we did that with the, with the box yesterday. Because you would think the mask would be a concrete hatch or it would be a composite slab and deck in one family that you could just, because then the, all the cells would be filled. Exactly. In reality, they wouldn't be white. Well, and, and the thing is, exactly. Um, so whoever did this, you know, did it so it's going to mask that out. Exactly. You would want it to be concrete. But if you, your floor right now is pretty dumb, it's just like a piece of concrete. But in real life, when you would draw this, you would actually make the layers and put a metal pan in it. And you could, now concrete. you can. And then when you cut that section, you would, you would see the metal, you would metal see the metal pan. pan. Yeah, now you can. As of like 2013, you can do that. Oh, really? You never used to be able to do that. Okay. Yeah. So there's a floor type to And you got to think now. Right now I have one surface for this floor. If I put in a structural floor as it calls out a structural floor, mm -hmm. just because I want to not have to draw this, now every time in every 3D view I create, 
every camera view I create where I see the bottom of that decking, I'm going to see now that many more surfaces to my geometry. And surfaces of geometry are what bog the computer down. Oh, yeah. Right? It, yeah. Having a single surface versus 20 surfaces is obviously going to be, and multiplied over however many floors I have, mm -hmm. is going to slow the computer down a lot. So it could is. That, so that, it's a trade-off. Do I care yeah. about computer resource or do I care about spending five seconds on a detail but just drawing that in? Does the course view apply to model space? Like, could you do a no. course model? Oh, uh, yes. Yes, I could. Model? If I make, again, it's, it's how we make, in the system family, no, right? A floor and a wall are, are all system families. There's no editing how those are created. If I was making my own custom floor, absolutely. I could say, um, remember our visibility settings from yesterday? I could say, is this visible in course? Fine or not. Think of a chair, right? When I get a chair from Herman Miller, that's a Revit chair, they have details set up where I have a coarse, medium, and fine. Most of the time, they don't set this up for you. On every view, you see the nuts, you see the bolts, you see the levers, you see the screws, right? I can say that I only want to see the form of the chair on course view, but then on the fine view, I want to see all the nuts and the bolts and the gadgets and everything else that go into that, that desk or that task chair. Um, same thing goes with this. I could easily build a family that has all that embedded logic. Um, do I have time to do that sometimes? No. So it, it's, it's, it's twofold. Um, either way, you have to tell it that that's what you want it to do. It's not gonna do it for you. So you're kind of making, a, your argument is to make a generic uh, floor that has just the thickness, overall thickness. Yeah, yeah. But would your argument still continue? Would it still go with the walls? Because the walls, we, we say like brick with two layers yep. of chip with so you would make just yeah, and, and that's another thing too, why you wouldn't want to do your own floor is um, if I do, right, let's say this, this floor um, becomes composite metal deck. So that one is supposedly composite metal deck. Um, let's get something that actually has a core boundary in it here. Uh, I'm going to edit this real quick. When I join a wall up to it, or it penetrates it, um, that core boundary, the same way it did in the join in the floor plan, it's going to join in section as well, whether or not that floor carries into that wall um, or is not carried into that wall. So I'm not going to demonstrate it. That would take too long to do it. Um, so kind of keeping it simple to begin with and then slowly building up detail is always um, to your advantage. So. Um, No, it, as much as you can, reuse geometry. Because then you don't have to go back and measure conditions. That's the benefit of Revit. I can take sections through this model anyway. Right? We've designed it, right? I got this crazy funky form, you know, double curved surface wall, right? How it meets up with the piece of steel, right? I've taken in the piece of steel and I I've let Revit define that that connection point at a at a level of detail two hundred where it looks right. But now I have to get into the fine detail level of detail 300 and actually say how, it, how it's cut, how it comes together. I'm afforded the advantage of, of really having a succinctness. So if I move something in that detail, so here, right, I say, whoa, 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 that's really not wrong. Maybe this is a steel beam coming in and it's coming in a little bit above it. So I move that steel beam down. Geometrically, in all the other views that are at a quarter inch plan or at a half inch plan, or, or, or bigger, a 16th inch plan, right? I'm gonna see that change happen, and then uh, my detail is corresponding with it as well at any time. I don't have to remember to, oh, I changed that a week ago. I have to make sure I change this drawing now, right? It's gonna change it in all of those. So I, I, like I said, it's, it's really coming in and I can analyze every condition then. You know, so many times, you know, that's why there's RFIs that come in. That's why there's change orders that come in. It's because you know, it's hard for it's hard for a human being to, to think um, from you know we're creating this thing out of out of space, right? It's it's this like cloud of an idea that becomes a building, right? We have to think of all the conditions before the conditions get built. Whereas we're building the building virtually, so 
we can begin looking at every single condition, right, and how they come together, how the slab meets with the atrium, meets with the two, two separate buildings, how those interact. We can look at those conditions and make sure things are meeting up. Something as like a catwalk between two buildings, how do those come together? Things like that were always difficult to do and have everything synced up where now Revit does do that. I mean, it's just that whenever you go into these things of drawing the wall sections of the details, it seems that is when you're bringing back the messiness of that. Oh yeah, like there's that. always going to be mess. The yeah, and that, and that comes down to, that comes down to your modeling. Um, you know, that's really what it is modeling. Sure, I could come in and model in that steel. We know how to model in the steel. We can do a sweep with it, call it a family. And there is a there is a, a three-dimensional geometry for this. So yeah, I can do that as well. I can say, you know what? Instead of doing a detail, I do want to see that. I do want that geometric piece in my model. Um, I can afford computer resources for everybody to have that in there, or there's some reason, like steel beams from the structural engineer. They're going to give you all that data because they use that for analytics, right? They need that three-dimensional geometry. So you're going to get that. Um, there may be cases where you draft over it or you don't draft over it. So, yeah, it, it's you know I, I wish I could show you some other ones like like a crate and barrel, right? A crate and barrel has something. It's awesome what they have done. Um, their design team has a lot of everything already pre-modeled and everything else. So all the drawings are like the model is what you see in the drawing, right? That's but that's because they can do this so many times. They've done the same building over and over and over and over and over and over again. That you can do things like that. In this case, yeah. this would be a, this would be an example where you could do that level of detail. Every one of my wall partitions, how those come together, right? I can easily model that out, and then I would never have to draw it again. Or you just draw it once and put a keynote on it, and give it just a dumb little rectangle box in, in the Revit model, and that's it. So, yeah. So on a recent project, um, the architect who was drawing it for us was using Revit. And they had done other office buildings. So mm -hmm. let's say they had done another crate and barrels. <coughs> yeah. And, but this was a completely new office building with new um, new walls and everything. And new details that were, you know, because she was taking them from our, our, our drawing. But she sometimes was using old details mm -hmm. as well in the drawing set. So how was she linking um, old? It, you have something that is a, you basically use it through the tagging. Um, like partition detail, I always refer back to partition details because they're a really complex issue with the way Revit works. Um, I literally need to have a standard partition detail outside of Revit that's referring that back. So a lot of firms handle this by making all of their standard partitions, right, as wall types. They do a generic wall, boom, 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 like a soldier course of walls. That is a file that exists somewhere. Within that file um, are then sheet details referring back, drafting over those, those, um, those walls. Then in Revit, I link in that file, and then I can set up dummy views in my master file of Revit that then pull that linked view into it. You got it. You got it. And then, and then, even though, and then, I, I, because it's in there, right? I can transfer those wall types into that project, and then I link that file in as well. Now those two are they're connected, but they're not connected. And then I can draw to my heart's content. But then I have one sheet that says here's the ten different partition types that I'm using, right? And then it's office wide. It works. Old detail. And, and so does that answer your question? Um, it's just like you think of the CAD block days, right? It's the only difference now is that um, everything can be tied together if you do it correctly, right? So would you bring in one of those details from the link sheet into the live model and group that, and that's and that will remain. You can do that too. Yeah, you can do that too. You can bring it in as a link um, and then group it. Um, it's really what you know. It's always a balance of computer resources, time, knowledge of the team. Um, and then what, what overall is, is the added benefit of me doing a certain process between those, those variables. Um, details, right? Traditionally, if you, that's why you see that there's this structure of, uh, and specifically because of details, 
um, why the idea of a BIM manager came about. That's why the idea of a CAD manager came about in, in architecture offices is because you need to have somebody managing just content. Really, it's just a content manager and a, and a teacher, right? Because, you know, if you have an office of 200 plus people, right, you don't want people redrawing the same metal over and over and over again. But then everybody's going to draw it different every time. And then there's going to be one that works perfectly for every situation. Um, that's the one you want to pull out and that's the one you want to give to everybody else and then you want to make everybody else aware that that's there. Um, there are going to be cases where you have new people come into the firm that have a series of details from another firm, you know, somehow, I'm not going to say how they got it, I don't care how they got it, but they're going to bring in their own details, their own drawings, their own take on it, you know, and they're going to use them. I mean, it's just being able to, to sift out what's good and what's bad. So, Cool. Does that make sense? To answer your question? Mm -hmm. Wasn't the Democratic question a Republican full answer? No, okay, good. All right. Moving on. <coughs> All right. So, again, so I've gone through draw order with it. Um, in this case, right, so I have a masking region happening. My, my floor is going beyond it. So, in this case, maybe I want to hide this completely. Right, because now I have my floor. I don't want to mask that out, or maybe I do want to mask that out. So if I do want to mask that out, um, I'm going to mask out that whole side. First, I'm going to move all of this into, into there so it sits nicely there. So then I can draw my steel or my concrete slab coming up there. I'm going to have to do some tracing, right? I'm going to have to do some, some of that. If it was smart, right, you're going to put in masking region that's concrete there might be times where you don't want it to be concrete but in this case we want it to be concrete um, I don't want to see that bottom line so I'm going to take this masking region and I'm going to drag that all the way down at least down here until I need to have it even go farther and then whoops uh oh completely disappeared so what does that mean it means I can't do that I need to actually have that live there as is and then I need to actually have that uh, another one come underneath it so having draw order is is really important um, you can go to town on masking regions I try I try to use a masking region before I before I go ahead and, and hide the object so I'm gonna finish out my masking region for this just drag it all the way down through there and why do you think I don't hide it right I so I'm going to send that to the back. So I don't want to hide this object because typically you just don't want to hide objects. If you can avoid hiding an object, one, I don't want to temporarily hide it and then it's always just temporarily hidden. So then I would say I'm going to go hide the object, right? Because then somebody doesn't know it's there. Right? Somebody has to remember to go do this. So I try not to hide anything. Right? <coughs> hidden, hidden things will, will begin slowing the model down significantly. Right? And also, if there's a change in this, like let's say all of a sudden we, hey, hey guys, there's an alert. Um, concrete slab thickness increased by an inch for all floors. Right? I'm going to have to go in and make sure that that's, that's done. Right, and if I'm a newbie and I don't know that things are hidden, I'm going to start redrafting this thing, right? Instead of trying to align it to something else, right? I need to know that that's there. So there's a lot of reasons why. I don't, I don't think that was the best example, but I think that's kind of why you don't do it. I just try not to hide anything, okay? Right, and then for this last part, right, I'm going to come in and I'm going to draft over it. So last part of it, doing simple detail lines or, or region lines. Gensler here? Take that. There we go. That's straight drafting right there, man. There we go. Can't wait to see Rodeo. Yeah, for the. Well, there's going to be. 
I think things like this are great because, you know, the guy that's like the super quick Uber CAD monkey, I can fly through anything, you're going to slow him down too, right? And then... <laughs> <laughs> that's a great that's a good thing. <laughs> it's not a good <laughs> thing. Yeah, it's, and it's not a good thing. But, but for somebody, it levels the, it really levels the plane. If you're, if you're, you know, and that's always the case. You're always going to make things like that competitive. I, it's yeah. always a race. It's always a race. It's always a race. So, I mean, it, it really does level. <laughs> it does level the playing field a little bit. So there's a chance. There is. A, there still is a chance. Right, I'm going to edit that boundary, make sure my lines are chained. Yeah. Well, see, and I always find that too is, I, oh, you know, and then we're. It's such a dumb wars. thing to compete about. You got to make it fun. Positive mental attitude. <laughs> Positive mental attitude. Okay, so that's that. Um, to make our own repeating detail, right? All, if I look at insulation, right? I'm going to drag my insulation through center of my wall. That's just a repeating detail, right? That is, I can put my width on it, right? Don't recreate the insulation. If you guys have your own custom insulation, make it a repeating detail. So how do we make a repeating detail? Um, what I need to do first is have a set of single components, and then instead of using one that's already been created for you, I can make my own. So I'm going to select repeating detail component and I'm going to edit this type. So again, we always have to start from something that already exists in Revit. I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to call it Tutorial Repeating Detail. And click OK. And then within that, I'm going to then pick from all the other detail items that I have loaded in. So I can pretty much make anything a repeating detail at this point, which is super nice, right? I'm going to do one. And then within that, I can say, OK, what's my spacing on this? Right, within my spacing, right, how much am I spacing it? Maybe it's only eight inches for this. What's my rotation? I'm gonna do a 45 degree angle. Oh, aha, can't do that. So I have to rotate it in the family, okay? So, so getting into kind of just making sure that you have all of those items together um, and situated out. So. And as a firm, you're going to be doing more and more. Like, you're going to go say, hey, well, wait a minute, in CAD, I have a bolt, right? Or I have a bolt head, and I'm finding that I have to, have to draw this bolt head all the time. Well, what I can do is I can make a new detail component family. I'm going to go File, New, Family. Make sure it's under the Imperial Library. Yours will always default to Imperial in here. And it's going to be a detail item. So I'm doing a new RFT, and then I can do another one under whether it be masonry, wood. Um, in this case, it's going to be a metal fastener. So we'll do metal fastener. Um, probably under fabrications. Uh, it's metal stairs. Common work results, metal fastenings. All right, so there's no RFT for that. So there's no RFT for actual divisions, right? You actually have to store those for you. So in this case, I'm going to go file new family and all detail items start out as detail items just straight bare bones this is what they are I can load components into this so I can load components into other detail families similar to the way I did it you can see that all the all the masking regions all the filled regions all of my dimensions dimensions here in this case are for constraints for parameters not for actual dimensioning of objects. I can't dimension a piece of steel, and I know I'm always going to dimension that piece of steel, so inside there I'm going to load it in every time, right? I'd actually actually draw the lines for the dimension. Okay, so in this case I'm going to make just a simple kind of kind of bolt fitting, so I'm going to take my rectangle there. That's, that's a big bolt, three foot. About three inches. Even that's a big bolt. Um, do an inch, which is better. Take that in, do that as one inch. Right. 
that through. MM for mirror, flips that over, deletes that second line in the center. Take this guy. So I want to fill at the sides of it. So I can go create line. I'm going to do my fillet side. One, two. I'm going to fill at that edge. Junky bolt here. Well, it lets me go so far with it. Delete that off. Yeah, do my fill it again. What's that? I can do better. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys, do you guys went through the exercise of drawing bolts in architecture school? Yeah. Oh, it's such a pain, man. Like you got to do the, the 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 ellipse, and then you got to do the thing on the side. This is my bolt. This is Craig's bolt. It, it's it's been it's been fully worn over the years. So there's my bolt. I'm going to load it in, or I'm going to save it out. So I would save this out in that fastening file. Or typically in the office, you're going to copy out Revit's template library, and everybody would point to the same library locations. Then, if not, maybe bring it up next meeting or something. Um, go ahead and go to family. Save your family out as Craig's Bolt. I'll load that into my project. All right, and I can do it in 2D, 3D. So detail items, detail components will load in any 2D view for you. In this case, I wanna go back to my call out. Right, and I would load in my bolt, so I would go to my detail component. So then I have my my bolt. So it, it, already, it was the last thing you loaded, so it just automatically. Yep. Was the same thing. Yep. Yeah. And then if I want to make a group out of that, so I can select it, right, and I can make a detail group. So then when I have that group, I'm going to call it um, tutorial group group click OK then when I go to load my detail group I'm gonna place detail group which should be uh, tutorial all the way down tutorial detail group and it's gonna copy it from where it was if it already exists if it didn't exist already that detail group is going to live down in the group area here. So I have detail groups and I have model groups. Model groups are different. So after you make something a group, you can't just copy it by doing copy paste? Yeah, so sure, I can do that. I can do that as well. I can do CO for copy. Oop, don't edit the group. CO for copy and I can do it. Yep, just yeah. copy it around. Yep. Yep. Absolutely possible. Any questions? Yeah, I think we got everything for that. Let me just double check. Grading views, detail component. Yep, 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 yep. So other things are line weights, right? So I, I typically don't show you guys this because I get John yells at me. Um, but it, I think it's still good to know where these things live um, and how the line weights are created. So I want to create a new line style and I want to create a new line weight with it and a new line type. So to do so, I'm generally always doing that in the Revit project. Again, yesterday we talked about object styles and subcategories. I'm going to go to VV, right? And then if I go to object styles, within object styles I have all these projection, what my line patterns are, what my cut patterns are. Well, um, we're going to do our own, right? Don't touch the ones that already exist. Don't modify the ones that already exist. They're there for a reason. Um, where they do live and how they're created is under the Manage tab. And it's under additional settings and it's under line styles line weights line patterns so first I'm going to do a line pattern to define a line style and then I'm going to give it a line weight so I'm going to do a line pattern and I can do a new line pattern so it's kind of like Illustrator. So everybody on, done a line pattern in Illustrator it's kind of like the dash dot kind of set um, I'm not going to go through and, and do one I'm just going to kind of explain how it goes Right, so I would do a type, what is it? Is it a dash or is it a dot? This one's a space, and then a dash. What its value is, how thick or how long it is. So I would say 0.125 inches. Should not, 
dot segment. Okay, space would have a one, one, two, five. This one is then a long space of of three slash sixteen. Let's do a half inch on it, right? Give it a call of tutorial. Now, then it's going to ask me to do a space. So I do my space. Okay. And then I'll click OK. So it always got to end with a space. So there's my line style right there, right? So that gives my line style. Now when I go to my line or my line pattern, now I can go to a line style. So similar to that, I'm going to create a typology of line that's going to give me a specific style that ties back to what I just created. So in this case, I would do a new subcategory of line called tutorial as well. I'll click OK. Under that, I'm going to give it a line pattern of tutorial. And then I can give it a line weight. All right, so we'll hold off on the line weight. We'll come back to it. Maybe I want that line color to be red. I'll click apply and click OK. Then the last part is under additional settings is the line weight. So don't ever, 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 ever change the line weights. The only time I think you'll probably be maybe editing, I mean, you see, again, talk with John on this, um, is your perspective line weight. So this is brand spanking new for 2014. Being able to do the line weights in a perspective view, so great. So, so great. Being able to actually adjust these things is huge. Um, I, I don't know how many like clunky, nasty looking perspectives I've seen on Revit because they didn't have line weights with it. So I can do line weights with that now. Model line weights, so these are where the numbers are coming from. Um, and then at each separate scale, they're corresponding with a different value. So as we're moving up, that line style is changing, right? So. So these have been carefully thought out, so don't change them. If you find a specific need, gather up your argument, talk with John. That's where they live though. So then what I'll do is finish my new line style, which is tutorial, all the way at the bottom. And I'm gonna give it a line weight of seven. Apply and click okay. So now when I go to draw my line in here, go to architecture, or excuse me, annotate, detail line, do my, my circle. I'm gonna use my new line style of tutorial. There we go. Okay. All right, so it's 1227, lunchtime. We're right on, we're right on time today. Is there a way to like quickly match? Match properties? Like the line weights? Like yeah. So that, yeah, you have several of these yeah. components you draw. Yeah. Like one. It, yeah, there is. Um, if I, and it, they got to be the same type. So a detail line has to be a detail line, right? So yeah, it, so yeah exactly. Um, I'm going to make this one hidden lines, right? So I can do MA for match. Select my line. Select that one. It'll change it. Just like the wall properties, just like your match layer properties in, in CAD. Um, so yeah, that's a fast way to think about it too, is I have um, several different line styles already just from copying in, right? And I could see them and I can just go MA for what I want. Draft real quick and then MA for everything. It's another way of thinking. I didn't really think about doing it that way. It's a good way to do it.